Welcome to the Bison Information Network News. I'm Basham Menzel. There's a lot of news to cover tonight, so don't go away. Last week, the Student Court of Justice hosted their annual student body presidential debate in the Memorial Union's lower level. The three candidates were Christian Walth, Tanner Johnson, and Joy Dolan. The vote for student body president and vice president for the 2022-2023 school year ended yesterday at 5 p.m. The representative will work with administration, North Dakota State Legislature, and the NDSU staff to represent the students. Last night, the annual Take Back the Night event took place in the Memorial Union. I have more on that story right here. Tonight is the Take Back the Night march and rally against sexual violence here at the Memorial Union. I was able to talk to Emily Hegg about the event. So tonight is our Take Back the Night event, which is an event that we bring awareness on campus and the community about sexual assault, survivors, creating community around the topic, and giving a voice um, to those who want to talk more about how that has impacted them, how it's impacted the community, and connecting those to resources. So tonight there is an opportunity for individuals to provide their story, to share their story, whatever that means to them and however they want to express that. I think that just creates an opportunity for them to feel empowered, to have that sense of community and support from one another. So our hope and dream is that everyone who in comes to the event, whether they share their story or not, is that they'll walk away knowing that there's their others to support them. Take Back the Night is only one of many events in the month of April. As Emily tells me, there are more events coming up later this month. So some of the upcoming events that we have coming up is, one of them is the Sextable, which is a, an event in Student Health Service here at NDSU, where we're partnering with the North Dakota Department of Health, um, bringing awareness around sexual health, but also offering an opportunity for students to come in to get STI tested at no additional cost. We're gonna have some really great information there, um, activities and engaging ways for students to uh, get tested, but to also increase their education and awareness. Secondly, um, in the evening of that event, so this is on April 21st, uh, there is an event called the Sex Positivity Expo, which is the Women's Activist Organization is organizing this. Um, again, just bringing awareness around the topic of sexual health and providing education and resources to students. Reporting for Bison Information Network, I'm Dashiell Menzel. The Fargo Air Museum and North Dakota State University are partnering to preserve the museum's photo and document collections. NDSU will share the museum's collection with the public via its online archive platform, which, which can be accessed at library.ndsu.edu slash NDSU archives. The two entities will sign a contract at 3 p.m. Friday at the museum. Museum admission will be free for the contract signing. Recently, Alpha Gamma Delta put on Mr. NDSU. Here's more on that story. Tonight we held Mr. NDSU, the 20th annual. It is a mock male beauty pageant. This year it was 80s themed and all of the proceeds go to a local nonprofit. And this year we chose Jeremiah's program. Jeremiah's program is um, a group that focuses mainly on mothers and their children who come out of domestic abuse relationships and they help support the mothers well. Their mothers, the mothers can um, continue their education or build their career while not having to sacrifice anything for their children. I was just uh, crowned Mr. NDSU and Mr. Congeniality through 2022's Mr. NDSU contest here at NDSU. How are you feeling about it? Feeling good. Definitely uh, blushing a lot, smiling a lot. Very thankful and very excited. And we're all heard. Thanks, Winnie. The Fargo School Board voted Tuesday to suspend a Fargo teacher without pay while the process continues to fire him for the cause. Kevin Kennedy is an English and theater arts teacher at Fargo South High School. According to his personnel file, Kennedy made inappropriate comments and inappropriately touched students. One student told the sc student school district investigator that Kennedy said vulgar and inappropriate things about her. Kennedy is also accused of calling a student a Nazi and making comments about a student's breasts. The, stu the school board voted voted unanimously to place Kennedy on unpaid suspension following recommendation of Superintendent Rupak Gandhi. Kennedy has been a teacher at the school since 2013. 
North Dakota House Speaker Kim Koppelman, who lost the GOP endorsement during his district's convention Tuesday, says he will retire at the end of his current term. Koppelman fell 19 votes short of challenger Jim Jonas for the second endorsed spot in West Fargo's District 13 Republican Convention. Koppelman was first elected in 1994. He'll complete his term of office in December. When we come back, Malik Mitchell will have Bison Sports Report. Stay tuned. Founded in 1985, the Missouri Valley Football Conference has established a tradition of FCS football excellence. Competing at the highest level of NCAA Division I, student-athletes at its 10 institutions demonstrate character, passion, and integrity as they grow as a student, an athlete, and a citizen. The Missouri Valley Football Conference, where leaders are shaped and champions are forged. One kid, one mentor, plus one moment can unlock limitless potential. 30,000 youth are waiting. Be there for one of them. Become a big today. At NDSU, we're gonna teach you about how to work with people. We're gonna teach you about relationships with people and how to manage those relationships successfully, whether that's at work, whether that's at home. We have majors in agricultural communication, strategic communication, journalism, and management communication. We have students who have graduated who are doing all kinds of different things, everything from marketing to writing content to development to career coaching. We also, of course, have people doing more traditional things like a news reporter or working for TV stations. The faculty members in our department advise undergraduate students. We think that it's important for faculty to develop relationships with our undergrads. We have a advisory board, and that consists of people in the community who are like local business people, and we try to make connections with those people so that literally we know the person that they should talk to about a job. You can't be in the world if you can't communicate. My recommendation is that you take some communication classes at the very least if you can. Even better, do a major in communication. The baseball team had a good weekend after winning two games out of three games against Western Illinois and Maycomb, Illinois. Drew Sackett had the most runs for the Bison in this series with four hits and three RBIs. They are now 17-9 overall and 5-1 in the conference. They will play a three-game series against St. Thomas this weekend in St. Paul, Minnesota. The first pitch is tomorrow at noon. For softball, they had a tough weekend after only winning one game out of the three-game series against Omaha. Emily Baringa led the Bison in runs and hits in this series. They are now 20-17 and 17 overall and 2-4 and four in the conference. Tomorrow they will host their first series of the season. I've got more on this coming right up. The softball team will come home this weekend after being on the road for eight weeks. The team is currently ranked 8th in the Summer League Conference after winning one game in a three-game series last week against Omaha and also against the University of South Dakota the week before. The Bison are currently 20 and 17 overall and 2 and 4 in the conference. In the midst of coming home, they will also have a challenging week ahead of them. They will have a three-game series against Kansas City at Thurlton Park for the Grand Slam giveaway weekend. With Kansas City not having much luck in the non-conference season, racking up a record of 8 and 22, they have been finding some success in the conference for the past two weeks. Kansas City ranks second in the Summer League Conference so far this season after winning back-to-back -back weekends against St. Thomas and UND. The first pitch is this Saturday at 12 p.m. Be sure to show up and encourage the team to have a winning weekend. For the Bison Information Network, I'm Malik Mitchell. You can watch the series on GoBison.com and later on the Ben Bison Information Network.com. The men's and women's track and field team competed at the USD Early Bird Sanford Invitational and the Mike Finelli Classic. For the men's, their 4x4 team won the meet while making them the fifth fastest quad in NDSU history. Senior Christopher Thompson finished first place in shot put, throwing 18.73 meters. Sophomore Dante White uh, ran 1079 to win the 100 meter dash. For the women's, senior Amanda Anderson won the discus title after throwing 54.93 meters. She now ranks third in NDSU history. 
Junior Alyssa Melvin won her section in the triple jump, breaking third all-time outdoors in NDSU history. Sophomore Salmara Corgo won the 100-meter hurdles, and Bonet Henderson won the 100-meter dash. Both teams will compete on Saturday at the Owl Bork Open in Bismarck, North Dakota. That's all I have for our sports report. When we come back, Cole will give you guys upcoming weather. Stay tuned. I'm your friend. I am your coworker. I'm your neighbor. There's no set person that that defines who needs help in North Dakota. I play cards with your grandmother every week. Hunger is becoming more and more widespread and and more known because there are people standing up and saying, hey, this can't happen. We can't be having this in, in our state, in our community. I sit next to you in math class. So it's proving that they're learning better and they're not coming to school so hungry on Monday morning. We're engaging them and we're, we're helping them learn. I mean, people want to help their fellow citizens and in this food bank, in this agency, that is exactly what's happening. Is people really, truly care. I'm here. I'm here to change the faces. I'm here to change the faces of hunger. One kid, one mentor, plus one moment can unlock limitless potential. One heart to heart, one inside joke. 30,000 youth are waiting. Be there for one of them. It's time. Become a big today. Hello everyone and welcome back to Bison Information Network. I'm Koi and I have a look, at what, a look ahead at what to expect throughout this next week. Starting with tomorrow, we'll have some partly cloudy skies throughout most of the day with the wind picking up as we move into the later half of the day. On Saturday, we'll still have some clouds during the day like on Friday, but the high will warm up to right around that 50 degree mark. On Sunday, we have about an 80% chance of rain during the day, but it should start to taper off moving into the evening. Rainfalls are expected to reach up to half an inch. To kick off the next school week, on Monday, we'll get some more sunshine again with a high of 51 and a low of 30 degrees. On Tuesday, we can expect to see some more rain with another 80% chance during the day. However, as we move into the evening, that rain will start to turn into some snow that could total about 1 to 3 inches. This snowfall will continue into Thursday where we could get another couple inches of snow. So as you can see, we can plan on a lot of moisture during this next week between both the rain and the snow because we're still, we're still teetering right back and forth around freezing temperatures. However, temperatures should be well above single digits, so we do have that going for us. Before we go, I do have one more thing to share with you guys. If you were watching the skies last week on Wednesday night, then you might have seen the northern lights that made an appearance all across the state of North Dakota. Although the sky was cloudy in Fargo, much of the state still had a good view of the lights. This photo was taken north of Crosby near Long Creek. This picture is captured by a member of the North Dakota Highway Patrol, and as you can see, it was a beautiful sky that night and a really cool picture as well. If any of you at home have your own weather photos or videos that you want to send us, then you can submit them online at www.ndsubin.com news for a chance for them to be featured on the news. Be sure to follow us on social media to keep up to date with the latest on local and campus news throughout the week. Well, that's all for our show today. Thank you all for watching and have a great night.